so um, a little while ago I did some upgrades to my bike which I've mentioned in a couple other videos but uh, the point I want to make about this is that uh, I changed out my uh, gator skin tires from a 20, 23 millimeter up to a 25 give myself a little more comfort on the bike which is to say you don't have to run the tires at the same PSI it's a little softer so it helps you uh, get a slightly more comfortable ride anyway the point I wanted to make about that is uh, I probably rode the Gator skins for 12 1400 miles I can't quite remember what and uh, I'm sure the, the uh, 23 millimeter tires that I replaced had a lot more life left in them I'm sure they do but uh, when I changed up to these one of the things that I wanted to make sure of was that in the event that I ran into a, a puncture on the road that I could be prepared for it so and again I had a lot of luck with the gator skins I never got a puncture so but anyway um, so I started to research and uh, think about well what do you need to keep yourself uh, covered in the event of a puncture while you're away from home and on the road so I got myself a little saddle bag that sits underneath the saddle and in my bag I carry tools to uh, take the tire off the rim I have a spare tube rather than a tire repair kit because I think that's probably a better remedy than fixing a, a tube I'd rather just throw a new tube in so I have that I have a CO2 container that I can use to blow the tire back up blow the tube back up I have uh, I have a couple uh, shop cloths used so I can have something to wipe my hands with I have a couple latex gloves to wear in the event that I want to make sure uh, I don't get my hands greasy and all that sort of thing so anyway I've got a kit that has all these road repair items in place and I was surprised how much I could fit inside my little saddlebag I also have a um, an Allen key set in the saddlebag to make uh, quick repairs to tighten up anything that needs tightening up so I feel much more comfortable about getting on the road and going greater distances and in the event that something happens in the way of a flat tire I'm ready to make repairs on the road and get myself going again yeah the reason I mentioned that toolkit thing is you know I think everyone should uh, consider that kind of thing uh, I've been very fortunate to have not having any mechanical issues while I've been on the road other than uh, getting my chain, my chain jumping off the chain ring and shifting up to a, from, my, from my small to a larger chain ring once or twice but uh, that was an issue of not having the, uh, the adjustments done correctly none of that I seem to have to worry about anymore I seem to, I seem to have figured all of that out and, and I keep up on it and keep the bike adjusted correctly but uh, yeah that would be a real bummer to be uh, a distance from the house and have uh, be a distance from home rather and end up with a flat tire
you know, when it comes to uh, being on the road and ending up getting a flat tire, I guess so many of us believe, you know, ah, oh, gee, that's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. And while for the majority of the cases, I'm sure that's absolutely true, there's a guy that I know through a blog, lives in the Bronx in New York, rides the same like I do. He's had a couple of videos that he's posted where he has stopped two or three people, I'm sorry, he's stopped to help two or three people who have had flats while riding in and around the city. So, you know, it's not uncommon and helping it happens, guys. So, I'm uh, I'm at a position now where I am prepared and happy to tell you so. River Road is over there. I'm going to ask this guy if there's trout. You going after trout? Hey. How you doing? You going after trout? Yeah. No kidding. Are they uh, native or what? Oh, uh, they're stocked. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I thought that's not until the third weekend. Well, there are certain places that you can fish right now. Okay. Uh, this being one of them. If you're south of that broken dam. No, oh, no kidding. In the marine district, you can fish for trout. I used to fly fish years ago. I used to tie my own flies yeah, and make I my do. own rods, yeah, but. I, I made this rod. Oh, did you? Yeah. It's, uh, are you familiar with, uh, you may not be familiar with, uh, some of the rods. It's a Stefan. Uh, oh, that's pretty. Is, a, uh, is that eight feet? It's an eight footer. It's a four weight. And, uh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, like I said, I made it. I bought the uh, blank. And this guy is the premier maker of uh, fiberglass. Yeah, products. yeah. I, I spent, uh, $150 for the blank alone. Oh, that's not bad. That's no, not bad. No, but the, the rod right now probably, you know, water would be probably 500 bucks. So what do you fish this time? Your streamers or nymphs or what? Uh, <coughs> I'm going to fish, I'm going to fish a, uh, a soft tackle, a wet fly, which is, I made, mean, it's, uh, it's got a body, it's got a body of a, uh, of silk. Okay. That, Orange silk, and then the wing is uh, oh, rough yeah, grass. Yeah. Rough grass wing. That's it. It's got, like I said, it's got a uh, orange silk body. This is from a rough grouse that a friend of mine shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this little thing here is mole. Uh, dubbing with the mole I killed my I, I rode over from Guilford uh -huh. and I stopped just before I got in Madison to take a couple drinks of water and I'm standing there there's little black flies all around me. Oh, that's a good sign. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. It's starting to emerge, starting to come out. Come out. Yeah, well, they, there's, they uh, those little black things, they come out all went along. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck to you. It's well, a good day to you. be out there. It is, it is. I had a I had to bring my loppers because I can't, I want to go on the other side. And the, uh, the thorns are so heavily crawled, I had to, I had to cut a path right into the wall. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, hardcore, you know? You yeah. got to fight your way in. Mm -hmm. I, used to, uh, I used to go up to Maine twice a year, Memorial Day and Labor Day. I used to go up to a place called uh, Rangeley Lake, Goose oh, Buck yeah. Mountain. Oh, yeah. I, used to fly, I used to fly fish, catch and release, barbless hooks, Landlocked salmon. Oh yeah, my god. I went up to Millinocket about three years ago and uh, that's all I caught was landlocked salmon. I didn't get any trout. So I fished for three days and I think I got 15 landlocked Wow, wow. Really nice that's one. That's great. That's yeah. great. I'll never forget the first time I, I caught a landlocked salmon uh, was in New Hampshire uh -huh. in the outflow from Newfound Lake. If you all right. know that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was fishing for trout and all of a sudden I got this fish. It was probably about 14 inches or so. And he jumped out of the water, he was four feet, he was 
high level. Yeah. I said, that's not trout. I never <laughs> saw a trout. I had never They're saw great. a trout jump four feet out of the water. They're great. They're strong, too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, good luck to you again. Yeah, you too. Take All right, care. take care. Nice guy. Yeah, years ago I used to fly fish. Great fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will subscribe to this channel. Subscribe by clicking that subscribe box you see just right there. And as always, your comments are welcome, so please feel free to post them. This is The Road Biker. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.